So for today's vlog, I'm going to speak about building a constructive relationship with the SEC. So what does the SEC actually stand for? Well, it stands for the Security Exchange Commission. And what is their role? Well, their role is a government-funded regulatory body. So they are the regulators. They regulate all the companies on the markets, but they also regulate any company out there who's looking to qualify offerings and raise money. So we've been qualified under Regulation 8 Plus. So in order for you to invest in the company, we first had to file this offering with the SEC, get it qualified, and once it's qualified, then you can invest. So there's essentially two schools of thought on how you actually deal with the SEC. There's the old school way of thinking, and this is whereby you should never phone the SEC, you should never contact the SEC unless you have to, and if you're going to contact the SEC, make sure you do it through your SEC attorney. Or there's the new school of thought whereby you want to create a constructive relationship with the SEC to be as transparent as possible with the SEC and deal directly with the SEC yourself. So as a startup company, obviously I don't want to spend the cost of every time I need to speak to the SEC, I have to pay my SEC attorney $1,000. I just want to pick up the phone and speak to myself. And this is the way the SEC would rather deal with you as well, especially a startup. So let's go back to the beginning and explain what I mean. So when I actually, I wrote the first uh, offering state myself under Regulation 8 Plus, I got an SEC attorney to go over it, and we made some changes, wrote an opinion letter and we filed it. When it got filed to the SEC, they have 28 days to come back to you to, uh, to review the offering. During that period, I got a letter from the SEC saying, George, his name's not George, but we'll say George is your examiner, SEC examiner, and we'll contact you once we've actually reviewed your offering statement. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I received the second letter saying, uh, yes, please give George a call. We have four comments on your offering. Now, what is a comment? Well, a comment is basically a question from the SEC asking for clarification. So they'll have reviewed your offering statement, they've got four comments, and in order for you to qualify, you need to address these comments or concerns from the SEC. So at this point, I've got this letter saying, I've got four comments, please give George a call. So the very first time I, I went to pick up the phone, it, you know, I was quite nervous, you know, the SEC, it's like, I'm gonna call them without a lawyer, what's gonna happen? And George picks up the phone and says, hi, my name's George. Yes, I am your SEC examiner. And before we start, Alistair, I just here to tell you, I want to help you in every way possible. It's like, that was the last thing I was actually ever expecting him to say. And that started my relationship working with the SEC. Please call me any time if you've got any questions. Now, the last three years, I've probably called George a hundred times. Therefore, I'll call him more than most SEC attorneys because they have to bill, and I'm just looking for information and clarification. So I dealt with the comments from the SEC and then we refiled the offering and we got it qualified and then it was approved. A year later, we did the same thing again and we got qualified at our new share price at $1.50. Just after that, I went to phone up George again and I had some other questions. Essentially, my question was, can we do a concurrent offering? You know, so you've qualified under Regulation A+, so we think Regulation A+, is for non-accredited investors. Now, can I do a Regulation D 506C offering? That's for accredited investors. Now, this is the traditional way for companies to get funded, because I've got an accredited investor who's looking to invest a larger amount of money than the non-accredited investors, but because of the amount of money they're looking to put in, they're looking to acquire a large amount of shares, but at a discount than our Regulation A plus price. So, you know, that's a question for me. It's like, how do I deal with that? So I phoned up the SEC and asked for clarification. I went through to George and he, George said to me, he goes, I'm oh, sorry, I can't help you in that. I'm thinking, oh, can't help me. I've just phoned you like a hundred times in like two years, George. How can't you help me now? I've got this big question. No, because we've actually created a, a new division. It's the division for small business policy and corporate finance. So here's the phone number, give these guys a call instead. So okay, I gave them a call. 
Now this is even better because now I'm actually speaking to an SEC attorney who works for the SEC. So we're through to the SEC attorney, for argument's sake, we'll call him Charles. So I basically phone up Charles and he said, well, put your question in writing and we'll book a 30 minute slot. So the next day I get a 30 minute slot to speak to the SEC's own attorney. So can I do a Regulation D offering and a Regulation A offering at the same time, Charles? Yes, you can. It's called a concurrent offering. As long as you are transparent with what you're doing, and as long as you file this information on the SEC website, and you're being transparent, you can actually go and do this. And I'm thinking, this is fantastic. Can we get any clarification on this, Charles? I'm going to send you an email, and I'll send you a link to the page on the SEC website. But I want to inform you, please check with your own legal counsel prior to doing this, because my job is to advise you on SEC policy, but it's your own legal counsel who are there to confirm. So I can't advise you, I can just advise you on policy, not on the decision you're about to make. So ultimately I check with our legal counsel and we're allowed to do it. So now I can actually pick up the phone and ask further questions. So if you think now we're about to uh, file for round three of funding under Regulation 8 Plus, but we're looking to do a security token offering, an STO. Now I've spoken about this before and I'll speak about it again. This is new. So therefore, again, I need to actually clarify questions. The question is, uh, can I do a security token offering under Regulation D506C? while I'm doing my Regulation A+. So I phone up the SEC, book an appointment, get through to speak to Charles, and then Charles has a 30 minute appointment. Yes, if you're doing a Regulation A+, and you're doing a 506C, a Regulation D security token offering, as long as you file it on the SEC website, it's called a concurrent offering, you can do it both at the same time. Okay, that's great, I'm delighted that we can do it. We're about to launch Zioncoin is related to the business and it's going to be an STO. So the next question is, well, should I put this information in my Regulation A plus offering that we're about to file? Well, again, that's up to you and your legal counsel. But my advice to you is, you should be transparent and put the information in there. So if anybody who's reading your upcoming Regulation A plus offering, they're aware that you're going to do an STO further down the line within that 12 month period. And that's what we're intending to do. So when we file our Regulation A offering, which will be in the next 10 days, we will have information about an upcoming security token offering in there. So again, this is now doing clarification on how to do concurrent offerings at the same time. Now, what the SEC is doing is they're just advising me in policy. But now I'm having discussion of discussion about policy with the SEC, which is fantastic, because now you're starting to get clarification. Now, ultimately, they say every time, there's not one conversation I will have with the SEC, and they will always finish with, you need to check with your own SEC attorney prior to filing anything, prior to getting any legal advice. But what our role is there is to provide you on policy and how that affects your company. And when I was speaking to Charles, I just said, this is just such a fantastic resource, especially for a startup like mine, because I have multiple questions every day, and I want to ensure that I stay within the right side of the rules. And the reply to me was, well, I'm glad you're phoning up, and I'm glad you're asking all the right questions, Alistair. Because ultimately, the cost for 30 minutes of my time with you is so much less than the cost of you doing something wrong and us investigating you and catching you at the back end. Therefore, any startups out there, this is the SEC's policy. Because they understand that the lifeblood of the market is new business coming through. And their job is to help you. Their job's not just to catch you and find you. Their job is to help you ensure that you stay within the rules. And that's the key thing through all the process. These are the rules, these are the guidelines. When you write an offering, the purpose of the offering is to reveal information to potential investors. Here is the offering that we've put out there. Here is all the information. If the SEC are happy with it, 
and you've gone through this process of comments and questions, once it's been qualified, now they can invest. Now they still have to do their own due diligence. The SEC doesn't make their decision whether they think it's a good or bad investment. All they're doing is they're regulating the offering statement to ensure you're qualified. So for any startup out there and you're thinking, mm, I don't know if I want to go down the regulation A plus process. It means I'm going to have a lot of dealings with SEC prior to even the company going public. I spoke about the advantages for the investor with an exit strategy. The advantages of today's blog or vlog is the ability to have this relationship with the SEC and the SEC are there to help, not be a hindrance. Thanks very much. Have a nice day.